Namaste. Hi. Let me teach you the Viparita Karani. In Hatha Yoga, this is a mudra or an energy channeling technique of ascending or drawing the energy from the body to the brain. So this happens after your asana or towards the latter part of your asana before your pranayama. Or you may do your asana, then pranayama, and a viparita karani. So that's the ideal, um, I say, progression you know, or steps or the order of your practice. And this is done before your meditation. And what it does, yeah, aside from lifting or reversing the flow of the energy from the body to the brain, it helps stimulate the Vishuddhi chakra, the throat, and the Ajna chakra inside. So this is best learned with a prop. Yeah, even if you are an advanced practitioner and you've been doing this already, so it's ideal to practice this over a soft, yeah, or smooth cushion, yeah, so to protect your joints as you uh, roll back and down, as well as to keep your head and the neck supported because you will be using that elevation to cushion and support the neck. So with your blanket, this is just like fold the blankets. You can just improvise at home. So from here, refold your blanket another. Yeah, um, height. Yeah, so you have this elevation. All right. So you're gonna place your head there down. Yeah, the, the mat. And then here your body is uh, supported with that soft and smooth cushion. Yeah, so it's lighter for the joint, so you can relax. Yeah. Right. So here the healthy gap between the neck, shoulders, and your head and then just hug the knees first yeah, and from there tucking the head and then do your adjustment by circling around you know, because as you do this technique the spine will have to yeah, adjust also and the shoulders and the rest of the body and by to align all right and yeah find that position again good and yeah, you might try side to side all right now important here you don't want to be turning the head so keeping your head there yeah up to the vertical yeah you may dry your mouth yeah dry the mouth first Good. And inspire the breath in. Send the breath up to the forehead. You can lift your eyebrows up. Yeah. Exhale, relax your eyes. And then try that a few more times. Breathing in. Yeah. So Viparita Karani, yeah, you may do visualization like the breath from the body. Pierces the spine up to the throat. And looping the back of the skull inside the brain. And ends the space between the eyebrows. And exhale the breath out. All right, when you're ready, yeah, lift the legs up vertical. And then here you might gently rock up and down yeah, to prepare the spine. And then final adjustment of the neck and the shoulders. You may slide back a bit. Good. So you're going to catch the hips yeah, at the top of that inhalation. Inhale. And the mouth come back at the top. And then your hands catch the hips. Yeah, and then your yeah, body will go high. And your feet will slightly go past first. And then you do your adjustment from there. So such that. Yeah, and do this. Inhaling. But first, your feet will go past. So you can yeah, adjust your shoulders under. And you may adjust the neck too. Make sure there's no pressure in the neck. All right, from here, this is important. Huh? So your spine is not perfectly stacked to the vertical. Yeah, it's angled towards the 60 degree flexion. All right, from there, yeah, what you do is to energize the, uh, your Udhyana Bandha. Inhale Udhyana Bandha. Yeah, and at the same time, move your feet slightly yeah, to the front. Yeah, so your feet now will not go past your head. Yeah, so the alignment of your feet actually, like you can see your toes, yeah, right in front of you. Yeah, neither too past, yeah, or too forward. You can do slightly forward, yeah, but make sure there's no pressure in the neck. So, in here, your hands support you all the way. Mm. All right, so the angle is not perfectly you know, vertical towards a 60 degree flexion. All right, from there. Yeah, inspire the breath in. As you inspire the breath in, also picture your breath. Yeah, from the hips. Yeah, piercing the abdomen cavity between the two big ribs to the chest region, to the hollow of the throat, and to the back of your skull. Yeah. And then you might yeah, externally gaze between the eyebrows, passively looking. Yeah. Have the 
external Shambhavi Mudra, or you can close your eyes in the Anta Shambhavi Mudra with your eyes closed, or you may gaze down the tip of the nose. In here, you may do the Nabhu Mudra, yeah, the surface of the tongue, lightly sealing the heart palate, inspiring in, and exhaling, right, breathing in, send your awareness up to your forehead, you may suspend one or two seconds inside. Yeah, you may breathe the uchai actually. And exhale. Good. And then if you feel the need to adjust, do those minor adjustments. If you're doing the uh, Kachari Mudra, you can actually do the Kachari Mudra here. But that one is an advanced practice. Yeah? Just seal the tongue against the heart palate, or you might just relax the tongue inside the mouth. So when you feel like your toes become slightly cold already, that's enough. So to release this one, breathing in, so this is where you're going to you move your legs past, your feet past, so you can close the hips, all right? This is important for safety, all right? Now, but don't touch the floor. Now, breathing in is inhalation as you roll your spine down, lift the head, and then lifting of the head will prevent the hips from bouncing. And then slowly you roll your spine down, and then when you feel secured, you may untangle, you might unfold your blanket, so you can rest the head there. All right, exhale first as you inhale, Udiyana Bandha, Udiyana Bandha inhalation. If this is heavy, bend your knees, like you're folding your muscles in and back. And exhale, let your legs rest, yeah? And then you just adjust mildly, that, and loosen. And you might adjust the hips too, and the neck and the shoulders, and then rest for about 30 seconds to a minute. Right, you can keep your visualization, so from your hips, yeah, from the tail, below the navel, send the breath up to your abdomen cavity, yeah, to the chest region, to the hollow of the throat, inside the neck, inside the skull. Lift your optic nerves up to your eyebrows and lifting, crimping them lightly. And exhale, relax. So it's this looping, you know, circular flow of the energy. So from the hips, you're piercing the back. Entering the back of the neck in the skull, looping to you, yeah, the top of the head and down. Your eyebrows, exhale through the nostrils, like that. So breathing in, breathing out. So when you're doing the Viparita Karani, that's actually the, the pattern of the energy yeah, in a circular motion. Right. And then when you feel your body is restored already, bending your knees, yeah, attacking the head, and then do a variation of yeah, the Mahamudra. So just hugging knees, closing the head to your knees, and then the knees to your chest. Good. And then you might do one side here, and then stay here just to open the back and recover the shoulders. Maybe another minute here. And ease the spine, and after that, back to the center. You may circle around first, and do the tuck to the other side. So draining your top ida, or uh, nadi. So this is my left side. So this is the ida, yeah. Yeah, sinking down, and then the pingala rests. Yeah. So just yeah, um, draining our hemisphere and. Yeah, the side trunk. Good. Good. And back to the center, and then circle around, and push and pull. But right. then you might do your sitting position. Right. After the sitting position, yeah, you might flow your vinyasa, if you're doing your vinyasa. Or oh, I suggest, yeah, if you're doing another round, yeah, you might do the flapping fish first, this one. Right. So this one counters, yeah the flexion of the spine because the Varita Karani is actually yeah, quite a deep flexion. So you might do this and circle around to loosen, flatten, 
you know, the hand rests a moment here, so the gravity pours down to your back and that opens the spine gently inside. Right. And then changing to the other side, you circle the legs around. You know. and from here, you may do this. Yeah, the supported locust, the supported cobra, yeah, a back bend. Right. And you do another round of Viparita Karani. I, I would normally do a child's pose. Yeah, and then from there, just cross through, and then sitting, and then do another round. If you're doing another set, and then recover again through the side uh, uh, fetus position, and from there, flow up to kneeling, and then do your yeah, Matsya Kridasana. At the end, after your recovery, yeah, you may you do your Shavasana after, you may sit. Yeah, cross legs because after the Viparita Karani, after the Mudra, so that's where you can um, uh, meditate already. So you can either do the chanting, yeah, actually, chanting is also a Mudra, or you can just sit still and quiet yeah, if you're meditating, sitting, or you can do your Shavasana on the floor. Good. So Viparita Karani Mudra, so it's a powerful way of reversing the flow of the energy. So we assess the energetic anatomy in ascending. Uh, magnetized, uh, yeah, apana agni from the body to the brain. And thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Good luck. Bye.